Hi, this is the Vista team at the University of Rochester. Today, we want to share about what can we learn from social media at scale and in real time during the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has severely affected people's daily lives and caused tremendous economic losses worldwide. Its influence on public opinions and people's mental health conditions has not received as much attention. The related literature in these fields has primarily relied on interviews or surveys, largely limited to small-scale observations. In contrast, the rise of social media provides an opportunity to study many aspects of a pandemic at scale and in real time. Meanwhile, the recent advances in machine learning and data mining allow us to perform automated data processing and analysis. We will introduce a number of our studies ranging from characterizing to the users and topics regarding the use of controversial terms for COVID-19, understanding how college students respond differently than the general public to the pandemic, monitoring depression trends throughout COVID-19, and studying consumer holding behaviors during the pandemic. Here we go. With the worldwide development of 2019 novel coronavirus, Although WHO has officially announced the disease as COVID-19, one controversial term, Chinese virus, is still being used by a great number of people. When they refer to COVID-19, there are mainly two ways, using controversial terms like Chinese virus or Wuhan virus, or using non-controversial terms like coronavirus. We find significant differences between these two groups of Twitter users across their demographics, user-level features like the number of followers, political following status, their geolocations, as well as their topics. To be explicit, we refer to the controversial group as CD and non-controversial group as ND. Here's what we find. Young people tend to use non-controversial groups to refer to COVID-19. Male users constitute a higher proportion, but the proportion of female users in the ND group is higher than that in the CD group. Users in the ND group have been using Twitter for a longer time and have a larger social capital, which means they have more followers, friends, and statuses. The proportion of verified users in the ND group is higher than that of CD group. As for political following status, there are more users following Donald Trump in the CD group than in the ND group. The proportion of the users in the ND group following the members of Democratic Party is higher. As for geolocations, we find that users living in rural or suburban areas are more likely to use the controversial terms than the users living in urban areas. Topics in the controversial posts are more related to China, even after keywords related to Chinese virus were removed before the analysis. Discussions in non-controversial posts are more related to fighting the pandemic in the US. We also find differences across the sentiment of the tweets posted by the users using controversial terms and the users using non-controversial terms. For example, as we can see from the figure in the right, users using non-controversial terms focus more on work and money issue. However, users using controversial terms present more negative emotions like anger. Following the closure of the University of Washington on March 7th, more than a thousand colleges and universities in the United States have canceled in-person classes and campus activities, impacting millions of students. This paper aims to discover the social implications of this unprecedented disruption in our interactive society, regarding both the general public and the higher education populations by mining people's opinions on social media. We discover several topics embedded in a large number of COVID-19 tweets, that represents the most central issues related to the pandemic, which are of great concerns for both college students and the general public. We find significant differences between these two groups of Twitter users with respect to the sentiments they expressed towards the COVID-19 issues. Here's what we find. College students tend to focus their discussions on topics closely surrounding their living environment, such as school closure and local news. Overall, a very small percentage of positive sentiments are expressed among the COVID-19 tweets. College students are shown to be significantly more negative. Non-neutral tweets on the social distancing and school closing topics express worrying emotions towards COVID-19. All the tweets revealing concerns on school closure are negative. Many students exhibited aggression to the foreign community blaming them for the current disruptions in their life as a result of social distancing. 
College students also disclosed the details of their online learning experience and mostly showed dislikes for remote learning. It is encouraging that our college community remains aware and vocal on the racism problem related to the Chinese viral controversy, which sends a powerful message on the public's intolerance of racist behaviors on social media for the betterment of society. The influence of COVID-19 on people's mental health conditions has not received as much attention. To study this subject, we chose social media as our main data resource and create by far the largest English Twitter depression dataset containing 2,575 distinct identified depression users with their past tweets. We train three transformer-based depression classification models on the dataset evaluate their performance with progressively increased training sizes, and compare the model's tweet chunk level and user level performances. Moreover, inspired by psychological studies, we create a fusion classifier that combines deep learning model scores with psychological text features and the user's demographic information, and investigate these features' relations to depression signals. We demonstrate our model's capability of monitoring both group-level and population-level depression trends by presenting two of its applications during the COVID-19 pandemic. Previous studies have used n-gram language models, topic models, and deep learning models such as one-dimensional CNN and BI-LSTM to classify depression at the user level using Twitter data. All these work use small samples of fewer than 500 users. Shen extended the previous study by expanding the dataset to contain 1,402 depression users and using a multi-model dictionary learning approach to learn the latent features of the data. In this study, we create a dataset of 5,150 Twitter users, including half identified depression users and half control users, along with their tweets within the past three months and their Twitter activity data. We investigate the performance of some of these models, including BERT, Roberta and ExcelNet on our dataset. We progressively add data to our training set and notice a clear performance growth on all models, which validates the importance of our dataset. We build a more accurate classification model upon the deep learning models along with linguistic analysis of dimensions, including personality, look, sentiment features, and demographic information. Then we applied our model and the DLDA topic model to the Twitter users. The depression level trends are different between DP and ND groups. The distributions of the topics of DP and ND are different. Then we applied the model at the state level and the country level. We select New York, California, and Florida. As we can see from the figure, Florida has a relatively lower depression level. The distributions of the topics among these three states and the United States are different. During the COVID-19 pandemic, social media has acted as a double-edged sword. While it is a rich source for obtaining useful information concerning the pandemic, it also shapes the fears. For instance, when posts of panic buying proliferate on social media platforms, people might make panic purchases after they see such posts. We analyzed the holding patterns of 43,102 Twitter users in the United States over the past three months, and particularly, compared holding related tweets across age, gender, family status, and geolocations. We find significantly higher anxiety scores for the holding related tweets than the general tweet contents. We applied a rule-based method to separate the tweets and their authors into two groups on the basis of whether the tweets indicate holding behaviors or express the idea of stopping holding. There are differences between the Twitter users of HG and NHG groups across age, gender, the population density of their locations, whether they live in the coastal states, but no significant differences over the family status, whether they have kids. Younger adults tend to post tweets that ask people to stop hoarding. The proportion of females of NHG is significantly higher than that of HG. The proportion of the users living in the urban areas of HG is relatively larger. The Twitter users living in the coastal states tend to post tweets that tell people to stop hoarding or panic buying. We apply the LDA model to investigate the differences of the topics between HG and NHG groups. The tweets of the HG group focus on food, toilet papers, and medical stuff, while the tweets of the NHG group focus on toilet papers, public health, and shortage. 
Food was always the major topic of HG during this time period. Even there were fluctuations. The overall proportion of the food topic was increasing. The proportions of the other two topics decreased as the pandemic developed. The discussions about the toilet papers was once heated around March 11th. The anxiety scores for the hoarding-related tweets are calculated using Luke. The Luke anxiety mean for the hoarding-related tweets is significantly higher than that for the general tweet contents. That's it. Thanks for your attention. This is Vista Team at the University of Rochester.